Welcome everyone to this session about virtual machine backups. My name is Daniel Clavijo and I'm an engineer at Nebula. For this session, we'll be in the company of notable speakers, but first let me explain a bit about how the backup integration works on the architecture we have here at Nebula. We have a fully integrated backup interface and since 6.6, um, we have now a proper backup system with its own set of API calls, a driver interface and managed OpenNebula objects. The backup system um, can be used by CLI, the web, uh, on Samsung and PyRedge, and is built on top of the API uh, as well. Uh, new managed objects uh, we have with uh, backup images and backup data stores. The images in the Benabula can now be of type backup. These are created at the moment of backing up at existing VM, and the images are stored on a backup data store based on the backup driver being used. This uh, backup is uh, optimized and extensible through dedicated backup drivers. New drivers can be created in order to use a specific backup tool. And this can be easily plugged in, into an existing Open Nebula instance. Each driver will have its own executable files uh, representing the action issued by the call, like the backup and restore actions, among others. We have two types of backups, uh, all and incremental. On full, each backup contains a full copy of the VM disk. And on incremental, each backup contains only the changes since the last backup. The number of increments at hold is customizable. Um, each backup contains every VM disk and VM template. These are stored on a newly created image object can, that can be later be restored onto a regular image data store. For the backups, uh, we can customize how they are made with uh, certain parameters. Uh, we can choose to keep or not the volatile back uh, images that are currently being used in the VM. We can choose how to freeze uh, the guest file system with no freezing at all, with uh, suspending the KVN VM, and we can also like use the QMO guest agent to freeze with optimal uh, performance. Then you can choose how many backups you want to keep and with the last uh, backups a parameter. And then you can, of course, uh, choose uh, the mode, incremental or full. And you can use also the OpenABLA scheduler to program your frequen the frequency of your backups. Then we have two drivers that we currently ship with the community additions. Um, we have now the rsync driver uh, that uses the rsync utility, which is used in most Linux distributions. And then for the enterprise edition, we use uh, the RESTIC driver, which is based on the an open source tool called RESTIC as well, um, which is a, a backup technology designed to be fast, secure, and efficient. Um, it has like interesting features like the duplication and compression. Um, this recently released the backup system. We have committed to improve it. On release 6.6.2, we have um, added the possibility of uh, canceling a, an ongoing backup op operation. And uh, on 6.8, uh, we will have uh, a feature called backup jobs, with, uh, which is an interface to use the management of large existing VM pool uh, of backups. And you have a, a view of the VM from the backup perspective instead of a per VM basis a backup um, configuration which will save a lot of time for the admins. Um, that's pretty much a high level of review of how the new backup system works. Now, uh, please uh, give a warm welcome to our speakers. Remember that you can use uh, the chat on this same page to send your questions. Now we'll have Frank Kohler from Berrios and Frank will tour us to the main features of Berrios and he will give us some hints about the ongoing integration with the Nebula. Then we'll have Marcin Kibachi from Storeware, who will give us a great overview of how Storeware backup and recovery works with the Nebula. I will leave the floor now to Frank Kohler from Berrios. Thank you for inviting me over to your Open Nebula conference. Um, I'm Frank from Berrios. I'm managing the community and marketing. And uh, since we had a couple of talks with you Open Nebula guys, um, we'd like to share uh, what we talked about in the past and how Barreos can help uh, in your environment uh, with backups and recovery and archiving. So Barreos is 
actually an acronym that is uh, standing for Backup Archiving Recovery Open Source. So you can imagine we are an open source tool, we are an open source company. And um, like I said, today I will talk about the collaboration um, of Open Nebula and Boreos environments. I will briefly cover who we are. We're, so the product is called Boreos, but also the company. Uh, we're based in Cologne in Germany, founded roughly 10 years ago as a developer and vendor of Boreos. And uh, we're based in the heart of Europe in uh, Cologne, Germany. And uh, here's where we do most of the development. Uh, we have our support team based in Cologne and other uh, places in Europe and else. And uh, the company is focused on uh, delivering service and consulting uh, for Boreos environments, meaning like integration of Boreos into open nebula environments or other environments. And we offer training and of course support. The team uh, has many years of experience in IT enterprise infrastructure. So we've worked for vendors like SUSE, Red Hat, IBM and VMware. And uh, our product is used for, for small shops uh, like the five servers or even uh, we use it at home and in private environments. But it also scales well uh, into the enterprise range. And uh, I've put down a few references later, but um, even some of the top companies on this planet uh, who are listed in the Fortune 500 use Boreos to protect uh, the data. And this covers all verticals, uh, mainly, of course, research and development, but also governments, the energy space, aerospace, autom automotive, uh, pharmaceutical, telco, finance, and technology. Uh, so there is no limitation in terms of size or business you're running. Um, Boreos might be, might be a fit for you. So uh, since we were founded in 2012, uh, three years later, uh, we had the daily downloads uh, of 10,000. So this roughly translates into 10,000 daily additional users of Boreos. Uh, we don't know the exact number as there are no metrics going to us. So we can only count um, paying customers. Um, we're also recommended by, by European governments for the sovereignty and open source status of the product. And uh, the French government has a list, uh, which is called SIL, which is an acronym translated roughly into uh, the list of open source software. And there's only one open source product listed at that time uh, in the category backup. And it's the only, Barreos is the only company uh, and product which is uh, with the status recommended and this is happening again and again. So there's quite some nice feedback from um, from Europe. So um, let's briefly talk about what we do and why we do it. Um, so uh, we're uh, a full-blown backup solution. And this means that we can protect uh, all kinds of data in all kinds of infrastructure with all kinds of protocols, uh, be it local or be it in the cloud or hybrid. Uh, from the technologies used in backup, we, we support the uh, usual uh, things like full backups, like incrementals, uh, differentials, and we've established something some companies call always incremental or virtual, uh, virtual full. So there's all kinds of backup um, procedures you can apply. Um, you also have a scheduler uh, and a job engine, and this helps with full automation uh, of the product. So this uh, actually reduces the, the operating cost if you can fully automate it. Um, that's easy to do because we uh, traditionally, we have a command line interface and uh, of course, you know that, that it's possible to automate things once you can issue CLI commands to run software. So this uh, also means you can easily integrate into any kind of deployment tool like Ansible or any infrastructure as a code. Um, 
If you're doing something out of the automation thing, um, we have established a web user interface. Um, so for instance, if you're trying to restore a specific file or directory, we have uh, created a graphical restore browser. This helps you to guide through the process of restoring files to your local machine or a remote machine. Since we're around the, the actual program code started roughly 20 years ago, so we have uh, lots of um, experience uh, and the product has grown. So this translates uh, easily into uh, great performance and scalability. And I have a few numbers later on, um, but I also mentioned that the product suits well for small environments, but also large enterprises. Um, we have a Belgian partner who uh, produces uh, Relax and Recover. This is a disaster recovery tool. We, so we have full integration here and we can jointly ship this. So for any DR needs, um, that's, uh, uh, we can rely on, on this real product. Um, the product itself uh, has a plugged in infrastructure. So um, we can have special uh, treatment of um, virtualization layers and applications. So we have specific plugins for the MVR environments, for Red Hat virtualization, for Overt, for Cumulo, for uh, databases like MySQL, Postgres, uh, Maria, and, and so on. And um, yeah, this is uh, our way to, to extend the product. Um, and this can be, if you're a developer, this can be your a travel vehicle to write an extension for Boreos for your specific needs. Uh, you can do this in your own environment or you can do this with us as a company. And our code is uh, based on, uh, uh, located in, in uh, github.com. So there's an easy way to collaborate together. So um, a small uh, chart here. Uh, how we can do it in, in your infrastructure. So um, I've put uh, the Bareos server in the middle. It's, we call it Bareos director. The director carries all information about the uh, scheduling systems, about the number of clients, the source uh, IP and the target devices. And like I said, this can be anything uh, local or remote or both uh, on-premise, off-premise, uh, physical, virtual. Uh, if we support the usual uh, mainstream operating systems in the Windows world, uh, Linux and BSD and derivatives, as well as Mac OS. And um, yeah, it can be any any uh, device connected by, by the default protocols, uh, SCSI, serial attached SCSI fiber channel. So if there's a Linux driver for your device, we usually support this. Okay, since we are at uh, Open Nebula user conferences, I'm, I'm happy to announce now that we uh, uh, collaborate in future and we have had a couple of meetings in the past. So I mentioned uh, various extensions with plugins. So the goal of this joint collaboration is to integrate uh, with Open Nebula um, in the same way we do with other virtualization vendors or cloud providers and um, this challenge here is uh, usually uh, the consistency of virtual machines. And so what, uh, since we are already uh, supporting Zen and KVM and the Ember, uh, we'd like to do this in a fashion uh, where we uh, have a consistent state of the virtual machine. And in the Ember language, it's called quiescing. And uh, we try to, uh, be effective in that way that we only uh, write changed blocks uh, to our backup. So um, we try to leverage a technology, um, which is sometimes called change block tracking. So this is a goal uh, to have a full blown um, solution while virtual machines are online to, uh, to be ready to be backed up by Bareos. And um, so what we can do right now is we can, since the Barrios engine provides pre and post scripts, we can send 
uh, commands to to open Nebula and to to its virtual machines and uh, integrate it into already uh, existing barriers infrastructure and that, again the future is is a plug-in and uh, where we uh, try to um, to flush the caches in the virtual machine where we uh, establish consistency so uh, we can run online backups for all kinds of virtual machines. If this is interesting, uh, please contact any Nebula guys or contact us or both. And we are happy to, to learn about your specific requirements. And um, yeah, we can help you uh, with a proof of concept and we go from there. A few references, uh, as I mentioned, the recommendation by the French government, um, uh, we have uh, several successful uh, projects replacing traditional vendors, including IBM uh, Tivoli Storage Manager or HP Data Protector or NetBackup or Veritas or uh, many other commercial products. Um, so if you're trying to get rid of, of the traditional vendors, uh, do feel free to talk to us and uh, we can help you to set up a proof of concept. Also, um, I'm not going to read out all those references, but we're strong in, in research and development. And uh, maybe we can talk about the first four uh, references, like the High Performance Computing Center of University of Utah, where we uh, protect 40 petabytes of data. In Italy, we have an even larger installation uh, where the IBM library um, contains 1.7 exabytes of data. And uh, I've shown the picture of the IT4 uh, Carolina supercomputer, which has uh, 15 petaflops. So again, uh, we have proven scalability and performance in, in many areas. And uh, also in, in terms of verticals, this is just to, to show um, that Barreo's backup solution is um, as well um, recognized by large enterprises. And I mentioned, uh, or I can mention um, several large European telco providers. Um, we have Lufthansa uh, for their um, mission critical systems and uh, several automotive companies based in Central Europe, as well in uh, finance and retail. Uh, and of course, in technology, and uh, we have, uh, like I said, several GSI partners, um, HP and uh, T Systems, and um, what else? Uh, the former IBM guys now can drill. So, um, yeah, um, that's about the commercials. Um, Let's uh, start the discussion with you. And uh, uh, I, I'd like to learn how we can help in, in your environment uh, with Open Nebula. Uh, if you're interested, uh, just uh, talk to us or visit us on our respective websites. And um, I thank you for your attention, uh, attention, and I'm happy to receive any questions now. Thank you. Many thanks for that excellent explanation, Frank. Now it's time to, to see another re real example of how backup works on the Nebula, thanks to Marcin Kubacki. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Marcin Kubacki. I'm Chief Software Architect at Storeware, and today's topic is Store Backup and Recovery for Open Nebula. So uh, briefly, we are the backup software vendor that supports wide range of different sources and Actually, today's session is about a new feature, Open Nebula support that has that is actually going to be supported starting the next release. In general, Store Backup and Recovery covers virtual machines, containers. It's always about the let's say VM level backup agentless approach, snapshot management for for wide range of the virtual machines as well. We have also a generic mechanism for the custom application uh, backup that you would like to sometimes to implement in your in, in your environments, Office 365, storage instances, and we also support file level recovery with synthetic backup uh, destination. So you can handle all of the our operations using our RESTful APIs as well. 
The overall landscape is quite vast. As you can see, Open Nebula has recently in, joined the, this diagram on the left top corner. And you can see that we also we are going to introduce OS agents in the next release, uh, along with the tapes uh, support as the technical preview. You can use file system, object storage, enterprise backup providers if you have them already on-prem. So you have a freedom of choice in terms of where your backups are going to land when you protect Open Nebula environments. For the Open Nebula, we strictly have designed a um, strategy using proxy VM approach um, that we also support for some other platforms. And it works basically like this. You install a you create a new instance, we have a proxy virtual machine, inside which we install node, vir node component. It is our data mover. Data mover basically creates snapshots of the, of the uh, running virtual machine or disks, and it attaches these disks and dumps the data. Optionally, we also support the incremental backup. It's a generic incremental uh, backup approach. So you are able to um, back up your instances also in the incremental fashion. Now, all of that is managed by the single instance of the um, store backup and recovery server. That's the place where you are going to see in a moment in a short demo, the user interface. That's the place where you also uh, invoke all of the APIs against and, and uh, schedule all of the jobs uh, directly through this API. The actual data lands in one of the backup destinations uh, that you that you actually want to use. One or two, because we also have a secondary backup destination if you, uh, if you are willing to have uh, two copies of such backups. Now, node is a component that can be scaled. So if you have larger environments, you can deploy multiple nodes and nodes are going to handle different sections of your of your environment like the clusters or hypervisors that that depends on your configuration all of them can also dump data to the same storage space that you have um, prepared we call that a backup destination now this path that the advantage of this approach is that we actually read the data in the same fashion as you would do with the um, regular vm the, the data is being read directly through the samsung network or whatever you have underneath now let's do a short demo so i have here an open nebula and this open nebula has actually several instances now here i have a dashboard of my running store backup and recovery with some protection stats i have one node and some backup destination it's a local file system which optionally by the way can use the duplication if you need to so you we, we deploy automatically it for you if you need but in general we assume that your backup provider has support like the IBM Spectrum Protect, Dell, EMC, Avamar, Dell Data Domain or whatever. Now, virtual environment section, if you go to the infrastructure, has an open nebula already configured. And after inventory synchronization, which is also done periodically, you will have the information about the network, storage available, cluster, and so on. But what is more important, you have these instances available in here. And now I can initiate some incremental backup. With let's say retry count zero, we just want to initiate it. And this is going to create a workflow with set of tasks. So this data is going to be first exported in the same fashion I have already mentioned. And then data is going to be stored in some place in your file system, in your object storage, in your uh, enterprise grade backup provider, whatever you would like to use. So there is no need to remove your existing uh, storage uh, storage or backup solution. We can also try to integrate with the store backup and recovery uh, your open nebula and your existing um, backup um, platform. Now in the console at the bottom, notice that I have backup workflow already started. I have the export task that is currently running. Now in the details here, you can see the history of the backups that I have already run. Notice that I have also some tags, some attributes that are scanned that can be useful for automatic assignment of your virtual machines uh, based on the these tags or the name convention that you have. And in the policies, you define the schedules that where the backups are going to be stored and which environments needs to be covered. You have also some additional statistics in here, like the backup size, backup time, backup rate, so, which you can investigate. 
And here you have all of the information additionally, like the disks where you would like to exclude some drives, maybe from your backups and some uh, other things like the snapshots that are currently being used in the open nebula or the um, or the mounted backups. Now, mounted backups actually is the feature for the file level recovery. So here the backup is still taking place. So in the meantime, let's go to the mounted backup here. This is the place where you can actually mount backups that you have previously done. And um, you can browse the same as you would be directly inside this VM and recover directly from this console. So from this user interface that you're currently look at, look at, look at. Uh, you can remotely upload to some destination host this data. Or if you have, let's say, large amount of data, large amount of files, so you can just go to this node and grab the data directly from there using the SCP or whatever you would like to, to use. So the file level recovery based on the images is also supported for the Open Nebula. And uh, both, if you go to the instances, you notice that I have several options because I, I'm able to share drives over iSCSI as well. So that's especially important for Windows guests where you would like to preserve Windows permissions and those needs to be also um, preserved when you copy data directly on the guest. So here you could share this, share it over SCSI or optionally mount it manually just a specific file system instead of doing it like I have did right now, mount them automatically and uh, preserving the single root uh, file system mount points. So like the home directories, etc. depending on what your configuration is. Uh, we also support the recovery plans. So now if you go to the restore, for instance, that restore capability gives you the uh, several set of screens for this individual VM. And briefly, you would change the name optionally. You would specify to which storage you may to, to import data and which is used as the images because we need to first to import to the images data store and then later to the target data store to spawn a new instance to specify the networking, some advanced settings, and that, whatever I have just selected, that would be a regular restore plus import to the hypervisor, but assuming that you have a single instance to restore. So with the recovery plans, you can specify all of these settings here. We treat it as the another policy, actually, like RP, let's say, and you create a set of rules for a set of virtual machines. They just need to match the same type. So you can have a single recovery plan for mixture of the open nebula plus other platforms as well and then inside such rule you may specify that periodically or on demand some of the virtual environments you will just want to restore for tests or when actually the disaster has happened Finally, just, just a few words about the policies. Backup policies actually is the place where you centrally manage where the backups reside. You can have multiple rules. So these rules basically define actually which backup destinations, one or two, are going to be used and according to which schedules. And you can use multiple rules to specify multiple different set of backups, like the monthly backup would be a separate, would be stored in a separate place and so on. There are, well, that was actually a very, very short demo. There are many other uh, topics to cover, uh, but now I encourage you to ask questions and, and thank you for watching this part. Thanks a lot for your use case, Martin. Um, many thanks for being part of our conference. We are having really great talks about the Open Label account. I encourage you to ask questions on the chat and that you'll find on this page. And I hope you enjoyed the session and continue watching us. Stay tuned for the next session.